Hi, I'm Chelsea. I'm a ballet teacher with over 25 years of classroom experience. Today I'd like to talk about feedback. Feedback is very important. I know you know this. I know you know this. I know that you are giving your students constant feedback. That is what the dance class is. But have you set things up so that you can receive feedback? Most dance studios are not set up for the teachers to receive feedback. Feedback from studio ownership and studio management is a different video. I don't want to focus on that today. I try really hard to kind of meet my own needs and fill my own cup. <laughs> so I would like to share with you today a system that I have set up to give myself feedback. And yes, it involves a little bit of charts because I like a good graph. If you didn't know why I was called Geeky Ballerina before, it hi. Here I am. This system that I use is an annual review kind of thing. Of course, I'm doing like daily and weekly and monthly reviews and I have a notebook in my bag and I'm taking notes and blah, blah, blah. But in terms of an annual review, this is how I do it. First things first, you need to pick what time of year you wanna do this. Either a spring show or a summer parent showcase or if you're taking students to competitions, if you are doing annual competitions, it doesn't matter that you're not taking all of your students. You will get the information that you need from just a few students. And this is because competitions come with multiple judges' perspectives, right? So what you do is you take your judging sheets and you go through and you just tally up, like what are the repeating corrections? And then which one got repeated the most? And that's what you will focus on in your upcoming year. If you don't participate in competitions or you don't do it every year, just pick your annual performance that you want to do this at. It does need to be a performance where you can sit in the house and just watch. If you are in charge of any costume changes, any chaperoning, any kind of like stage management, you can't give this the focus that you need. So find a time when you can watch your students perform and not be in charge of anything. And for some of you, that is going to be on a video. Some of you are running 18 people's jobs through just you, and that's impressive. So you might need to do this on video. As you watch your students, just sit there with like a notebook and something to write with and just take notes. And, and they're not personal notes, like don't write the names of people because these are not things that you're going to go back and help this person fix. You're looking for what are the recurring corrections across levels, across dancers, across the entire performance. And then you do the same thing, you tally up the repeaters and whichever thing repeated the most, that gives you your focus for the next year. And you just work on it throughout the year and it doesn't have to be a huge thing. If you have a system that works, if you have a curriculum that works, you already have your vocabulary mapped out for the year. You already have your key principles. You already know what the kids need to achieve by the end of the year in order to be able to advance. You already have the map. If you don't have a curriculum, a roadmap that gets you where you want to end up, I do have one that I've created. It's on my website, geekyballerina.com. In my mother-in-law's car is an atlas. And yeah, she has a phone. She can get directions from her phone, but what the phones don't have are her notes that she has accumulated. This atlas is amazing because you open it up and she's written. She has beautiful, very clear handwriting and she's written down like the best fast place to eat in, in a town or don't stop here. The bathroom is gross. Like really good information. <laughs> that's kind of like the atlas, the map, that's your curriculum. And then the personalized notes, those are the things that you observed either from your judging sheets or from your performance review. You have your map. All we're doing is writing like foot shapes or flexibility or knees or wonky, whatever, whatever it is that you're noticing. The map still applies. You're just adding a note. So it's actually not a huge deal. And then you do the same thing the next year because A, you are progressing and improving as a teacher, which means your students are also improving and progressing. And so you're not going to need the same focus next year. But the other reason it's really important to do this is because you deserve a chance to look at the new information and say, oh, 
I didn't repeat the same thing. Like I have a new thing to work on. That means you did something really, really, really well. So take your second and just feel really satisfied and pleased and proud of yourself that you helped people get to a new place in their training. That's a really cool thing. As teachers, we spend a lot of time giving and focused on our students and we help them celebrate their wins a lot more often than we take the time to celebrate our own. When I say I hope you have a really great class, I don't just mean your students. I hope you have a really great class. Please take time to cheer yourself on.